free indeed free indeed and I start with the scripture in John's gospel chapter 8 starting in verse 31 John 8 31 and I'll read verses 31 and 32 then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him if you continue in my word then are ye my disciples let, let me read that verse again Jesus said or then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Let me jump to verse 36 because it contains the title of this sermon. In verse 36, it says, If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Amen. Jesus was speaking to the born again. He wasn't speaking to all Jews. The scripture said, he was speaking to the Jews which had believed on him. He was speaking to the born again. So today this verse speaks not to unbelievers, but to those who are born again. I've chosen the King James Version rather than the New King James Version because of one word. He said, if you continue, King, New King James says, if you abide, it's the same thing, but if you continue in my word, then, and I add only then, are ye my disciples indeed. Herein lies one of the great deficits of the body of Christ today. For those who, who are still passionate about winning souls to Jesus, because many have become cold and are no longer winning souls. And I just, we can do a quick exercise to substantiate what I said. How many did you win this week that ended yesterday or last week that ended yesterday? How many? How many did you win in the last month or the last year? The deficit is even for those who win souls, they get them to believe and to give their lives to Jesus and then they leave them. Freedom comes as you discover the truth. And what Jesus said here is if you continue, if you continue, somebody turn around to, to your neighbor and just say to them, continue. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed? So, that means if you stop, if you stop and you don't continue in his word, you are no longer a disciple. If you are no longer a disciple, you cannot glean the truth and become free let me explain I'm talking about freedom 
Freedom is not a bus stop. Freedom is not a destination. Freedom is a journey. And you know if you're on a journey and you stop, you've stopped the journey. Freedom is, is the journey. And discipleship is the bus. It's the vehicle that carries you on that journey. And, and, and so, what we need to understand is that we are growing in the knowledge of his word every day. As a disciple, a disciple is a pupil, a learner, one who is, is led, who is guided, who is instructed. And as we continue to be disciples, and I'll just give you another example from Scripture. If you go to Matthew's Gospel, uh, chapter 28, you will see Jesus called his disciples together um, just before he, he ascended. He called them together and he said to his disciples, make disciples. So you will always be a disciple, but that also puts on you the responsibility to make disciples of others. This is the biggest deficit in the church today. We think it's enough to give our lives to Jesus. But the freedom comes as we continue in his word. So that today, if you hear his word, Freedom comes with his word. And you can say that from the word I've heard today, tomorrow I will have greater freedom. Freedom is increasing. You are becoming more free with every day that passes. Let me just share a few more uh, uh, verses from that scripture. Jesus had spoken to them in John chapter 8, I've read verses 31 and 32, I'll read verses 33 on. They answered him and said, we be Abraham's seed. We were never born in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, you shall be made free? They were very cerebral. They were rational. You want to make us free, but we're free already. And Jesus in his answer, verse 34, said, Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you are free indeed. We've looked at freedom and we've called it so many other things. Let me come back again to our responsibility to reach others with the gospel of Jesus Christ. In John chapter 4 and verse 35, John 4, 35, Jesus said, Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are already for they are white already to harvest. We cannot escape this responsibility. Paul writing to the church in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 18 and 19 said this. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 and 19. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Christ Jesus and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Everyone here who is born again, who is continuing in his word, is called unto the ministry 
of reconciliation. That is to reconcile man or men to God. And that is not to just simply minister to them and when they believe lead them through the sinner's prayer. That's not enough. You could lose them. If they, have, if they haven't been taught to continue in his word, they can be lost. Verse 19. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. We're called to reconcile men to God. We're called to preach the gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ. This is our freedom. The song, the choir sang, we shall overcome. It, had its, it has its origins in the gospel. It was a gospel song that was amended. And I have the words here, but I can't sing. The world is one great battlefield. The world is one great battlefield with forces all, with forces all arrayed. If in my heart I do not yield, I will overcome someday. And there were women like Rosa Parks who knew they were free. Because they were walking with Jesus. Rosa Parks knew she was free. Her freedom did not depend on what part of the bus she sat on. She knew that she had freedom because she continued with Jesus to abide in his word. And, and, and we cannot lose the battle to save Nigeria because we are free. Because we know we are free. And because we walk in the freedom which we have in Christ Jesus. And our freedom puts many responsibilities upon us. There was something that Jesus said to, Paul, to Peter. He called Peter and he said, Peter, Luke chapter 22, verses 31 and 32. The Lord said, Simon, Simon. <laughs> it's so interesting. He calls him Simon when he wants to tell him off because he was a Simon. Okay. But Peter, when he's done the right thing. Amen. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you. Make no mistake. Satan has desired to have you, every single one of us here. Satan has desired to have us that he may sift you as wheat but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not when faith fails what's going wrong there's not enough word because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. I prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, strengthen thy brethren. There's a time from the time you have believed to the time when you have entered into a realm of freedom. And you're walking in freedom, ever increasing freedom. I think one of the things that we need to know and know and know and know beyond any, uh, any doubt whatsoever is from Romans chapter 6. Now I'll start reading in verse 18.
Romans chapter 6 verse 18. Being then made free from sin, ye became servants of righteousness. That's the call. This is interesting. It's, it's paradoxical, if you like. You're free, but a servant. You've been made free, but you become a servant. Being made free from sin, ye became servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members, your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even now so yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. This is the first requirement of freedom. The Bible teaches us that we have dominion over sin. So when you rejoice that you are free, rejoice not because you can go wherever you please to go. You can do whatever you please to do. Rejoice because you've now become a servant of righteousness. For when ye were servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and everlasting life. And just to go back to the song we sang, John in his epistle, 1 John chapter 4 verse 4, said, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Today what operates in your life is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus who has made us free from the law of sin and death. So my call today is that whatever we will gain, whatever we will accomplish, it's a better word, whatever we will accomplish, it is walking in the freedom that Jesus Christ has given unto us. And we must not neglect the souls that are lost. We must become conscious of the responsibility placed on us not only to win souls to Christ, but to have them stand so that they can continue in the word. It takes discipline. And I think we had on our webinar last Thursday, we talked about the word. If you want to continue in the word, you must not only read your Bible, read the word, and I, I, I counsel you whenever you want to read the Bible, invite the Holy Spirit to explain it to you. Remember the eunuch, the, was it Stephen, had to explain to, he, he was reading scripture, but he didn't understand what he was reading because he needed one to explain. You need one to explain. So read the word, study the word, study the word. To study the word, you need tools. There are many tools that are required in studying the Bible because therein can revelation come. Concordances, dictionaries, concordances. 
And then meditate on the word. Meditate on the word. Continue to run it over. Take a verse. And for hours, just speak that verse to yourself. Meditate on that verse. God can open that verse and give insight and revelation that nobody ever had before from that verse. Something that would be meaningful to help and to direct your life. And then speak the word. Speak the word. It's the word you deposit in your heart that the Holy Spirit will bring back to your remembrance. He's bringing it to your remembrance, so you heard it before. You deposited it in your heart. You kept it in your heart through meditation. So, we're called into righteousness, and we're called principally to reach the lost and bring them back to the fold of God, to reconcile men. And in doing so, don't, it's like abandoning them in the wilderness when you lead them to Christ and forget them. We must, we must help them to stand. And here's one thing, here's a truth. You cannot disciple anybody if you are not a disciple yourself. So the, we must be disciples ourselves as as i think it was jesus that said can the blind lead the blind will they both not fall into a pit and then the english have a saying that in the land of the blind the one-eyed man is king don't be a one-eyed man because two eyes give you better vision than one eye Let's take up our responsibility and perform it. Now, I want us to take a few minutes to pray. Father, we have neglected your great commission to reconcile men to you. You used men or women to bring us into your kingdom. And we have become so comfortable that we have neglected this responsibility. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be mindful of our need to do so. Help us to be a blessing to others. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. You know, I was sharing something at a conference this week. I just want to share with you. These are just thoughts. 70% of Nigerians live in abject poverty. That's a fact. Okay? Abject poverty, I think, is less than a dollar a day. 85% of the poor in Nigeria live in northern Nigeria. Northern Nigeria has become a massive recruiting ground for people like Boko Haram, IS Western Province, and there is nothing, put it this way, rich Islam is not as deadly as hungry Islam. And one of the challenges we have as churches, as the body of Christ in the South, is can we, whether they are Muslims or Christians or animists, can we feed the poor in the North? clothe the poor in northern Nigeria help the poor in northern Nigeria because if we can do so we limit the recruiting ground for such groups like Boko Haram 
That's the answer. It's not guns. It's help. And, and Jesus said, you saw a stranger. You saw me a stranger. You fed me. You clothed me. You visited me. Amen. Let me stop that there.